This is Athena Jezik, and working from the low back, when the low back is in stress and in pain, there's something going on there. And of course, because this is a solid column of bones, one will react against the other. They all have their relationship. And moving up the spine, because the back, if you're sitting a lot in an uncomfortable posture, then you're going to translate all of that dysfunctional alignment up into the shoulder and neck area. So as it creeps up, and then also when you're sitting at your computer desk or anything, you're, you're hunching over a little bit because abdomens are going to be getting uh, weaker, and so the posture is going to tend to round into, into a rounding forward, and the shoulders are going to be dropping forward, and then usually the head is going to be repositioned where it's thrust forward. And then you get all kinds of cricks in your neck, shoulder pain, and all of that starts to tie in. It, the work gets pretty complicated really when you get up into these areas because there's so many muscles that allow for such big range of motion in the shoulders that it, uh, it, it takes a lot of work to you know, get to each one of those parts and find out exactly where it's locked down. So I am again just looking at muscles and testing the muscle to see where the pain is or the tension is. And up here, where it's common, very common, levator scapula, there's crepitus, which is like a clicking. It's, it just is like little hard crunches. Nobody's really defined crepitus. I just think it's where it, it has so much work that it does. I think it's toxin locked into the tissue. It could be twisting of things. It's hard to really know, but it definitely has a feel to it. Sometimes you'll think you're on crepitus, but it's more crunchy because it, you'll feel like you're going over one muscle to another, and you might think it's crepitus because there might be a little bump in it, but it's not if it doesn't have a crunchy sensation to it. So here for the shoulder, I'm just working that out because the shoulder pain seems to really come from this forward hunch and the, the repositioning of the neck into a position that's not uh, a good one for the entire alignment. And that will, in fact, also make the low back go into pain eventually because it does all travel, all works together, and it's all normalizing to what's going on. So if it's out of alignment, the whole thing is going to align in a misalignment in order to bring you to the best alignment possible. So this is just going over the scapula and different muscle checks there. Because the important thing is usually going to be found up into the neck. Uh, with Especially with the sitting jobs that we have. Now if you're playing sports or golfing and using your shoulders in different ways like that, then we would do different work for the shoulder, checking the front of the shoulder and different areas. You almost always find some relationship up into the neck. So with the neck, then of course, we wanna make sure that the occipital base is, is soft in here. And that's the edge of the, right at the very, very, very edge of the occiput. She's like this. So it's right in here. And the vertebrae, the first vertebrae is coming right here. And that's the atlas that I spoke about earlier. So you want to just get the fingers in and without any pressure, it's the five gram pressure thing. You just wait and make sure that, that the muscles are softening and letting you in. Now what you can also tell here is you can tell which side of the body is t more tense you can tell which side of the body is supporting more. You can, you can tell a lot by the way that these things let go. It takes a little bit of time to be able to translate what you're feeling, but you, it's really quite clear which side of the body is more affected and which side of the body has its problems. Sometimes you can even feel the, the torque or the side bend right here at the base of the skull. And oftentimes, if you know what to feel for on that wing of that atlas bone, you can uh, 
You can tell if the atlas is out of position. I do not have the skills to align the atlas, but all I will tell you that sometimes when the tissues get soft and the dural tube is beginning to, to correct, that that atlas will go into a corrected pattern on its own. So here it's sinking in, sinking in, sinking in. She is tighter on the right hand side and you can see that even a little by the misalignment of the of the vector. There's a little curve there. And it's very hard to pick up that curve until you feel it, for me, till I feel it with my hands. Once I feel that's the tension, then the whole picture of her back changes for me because then I'm seeing into the restricted areas and I'm not seeing it as a body on the table as much as I'm seeing it as restrictions. So with this, with the face down, the neck can be worked in, into the shoulders. Now neck work on the back side, you can, you can go in with a little bit more um, pressure if you want. I never, you know, use a lot of pressure. But there's more muscle back here. When you get to the front of the neck you're dealing with, there's clo veins closer to the surface and nerves, and that's a little bit more careful. There's the throat and the trachea and all of that that you don't want to you don't want to uh, damage any of those structures of the, the thyroid gland and all that. So that's a different whole thing to work the neck there. But it's primarily the back of the neck that's going to give the problems where the muscles are anyway. So coming in right up to where the uh, the trapezius comes up into here. And that's a good way. There are other uh, muscles in the neck that you can get from the side, working work down, downward and upward. And of course you'd want to do neck rotations, which is impossible to do face down. So this is really to work to get the softening, get the tension out of the muscle so that the range of motion and the problem can be easier corrected on its own. Because we have to remember when these muscles are real tight like this, it's going to hold down from the more delicate structures of the subtle anatomy to be able to correct as quickly. And then we can just work through here a little bit. And so that is just a little bit of stuff to do there. And again, that's, that primarily comes from postural postural things, misalignments, and a lot of how we sit. And of course, once again, it comes back to the abdomen. The core strength of our body. And when we have a lot of good core strength, we can do a lot of different things. So if you're thinking about any kind of exercise program for yourself, I would strongly urge you to look for something that develops core strength. Yoga is one of the ones that I know about that does that. I know there's others, but yoga is a very good um, way of getting core strength. And there's also classes that are called restorative yoga that are ones that just let you work yourself open with passive stretching and the work of gravity that'll open you up from different positions. There should be no force. It's yoga in some ways, especially restorative yoga, works a lot like cranial sacral. You just wait for things to soften and the body will begin to go to the right position. So there's a little bit on the neck and tying it in with the low back. Start to take care of it that way and you can come out of pain. So thank you very much. Please rate the videos for us so we know if we can improve in any ways possible.